Hello, Nebraska. This is Training Blend, the official podcast of the State of Nebraska Training and Development Team. Hello, Nebraska. My name is Katie Ackerman, and welcome to episode number nine of Training Blend. We're here today with a special episode to give you the lowdown on performance reviews. Let's get a quick hello from the rest of the training team with me here today. I'm Mary Beth. And Renee. We're joined for today's episode by our special guests, Chase Olson and Justin Burton. Chase and Justin are two of the tech gurus who man the link help desk. We're also joined by a returning guest, Jason Jackson. Jason is the Director of Administrative Services and the State Personnel Director. Welcome, everyone. Hello. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. So we're going to spend the next few minutes talking about performance reviews. We'll talk about some best practices for meaningful and effective performance reviews, as well as some tips and tricks for getting it done in the system. Let's get started. It is time for the hot seat questions. <laughs> are you ready? Is this on the sheet? It is nope. not. <laughs> we don't there, are no <laughs> there are no correct answers. Okay. Actually, Except for there are. There are, for sure. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> question one. Bacon or sausage? Bacon. Bacon. You both passed the first round. Congratulations. Okay, Driving or flying? Driving. Flying. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Coke. Morning person or night owl? Night owl. Both. Maybe don't sleep. Just don't sleep. I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> I, I love getting up super early, but I don't and like working on performance bed. reviews. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Country or city? City. City. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Cats. Favorite vacation spot? Probably California so far. Either Albuquerque to see my nephew and niece. Puerto Rico, San Juan, but that was 2004, so. Actually, I like to stay home. <laughs> staycation. A staycation, yeah. Favorite smell? Candles. What? <laughs> uh, favorite smell, because I do have a sensitive nose. Anything from Scentsy. How about that? All right. Yeah, boom. Candles and Scentsy. I love it. Yeah. The idea, guys. Favorite season? Fall. Fall or spring. Snow or no? No. No. What are you reading or listening to lately? Uh, I'm listening to The Stormlight Archives by Nebraska author Brandon Sanderson. I got a couple books going. One of them is a biography on Kurt Vonnegut Jr. And then another one's just fiction. I love music. I've been doing a lot of random playing on jazz lists from Apple. Make, model, and color of your first car. Uh, red 1989 Dodge Daytona with a little two-door hatchback. Two-door Buick Skylark that was kind of orangish. Nice. What is your spirit animal? We just looked this up. Mine's a tiger. <laughs> There's a My twist sp- for this? No, it was a Chinese, Chinese animal. Yeah, because, oh. I mean, mine's an ox, but my spirit animal's probably a sloth. <laughs> they're awesome oh, they're very in right now so yeah. so laid back and mm-hmm. mellow what was your first job and what was the worst part of it uh, my first job outside of detasseling like almost every Nebraskan uh, was working at a vet clinic as just kind of an assistant uh, the worst part was giving cats shots of insulin oh, not yeah. a fun experience yeah. cats don't like shots I bet not I had a lot of not fun jobs growing up, like well, detasseling. I think one of them was as a part is just for a week. The gym at my school last summer, they were putting in things that would hold a volleyball post, and they were doing it the length of the gym so they could have two for practices. The guy drilled the hole in the gym, and then my job was to basically by hand dig out the dirt underneath so we could pour cement into it. And the angle and everything, I basically spent the whole day laying down and chopping with a screwdriver, loosening the dirt, digging it out. It was like going and digging out of prison is what it felt like. (laughs) (laughs) And whatever minimum wage was back then. So, yeah, just not fun across the board there. What TV show from your youth would you like to bring back? Like a reboot? Yeah. BJ and the Bear. That's one of them. There's a ton. Are you afraid of the dark? I'd like to see a remake of that. Solid choice. 
thank you guys for Love. participating in our hot seat questions, even though you didn't really have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it nonetheless. I could have left. They're not holding me here. Jason, could you give us a little more information about why performance reviews are important at the state and how they support the overall mission? Sure. So the reason we do performance reviews is we want everybody to have a clear idea of what's expected of them and then and how they're doing. You know, so as we think about how we want state government to be an operationally excellent organization, and we want to create value and create opportunity through efficiency, effectiveness, and customer focus, I mean, that's our broader mission. But every teammate deserves the opportunity to understand, okay, how does that impact me personally? And that's where goals come in. And then how am I doing, both in terms of my my immediate performance, but also broader as I'm thinking about growing my career and how do I advance within this organization. So that's where performance reviews come in, is it should be one touch point among many where we're creating opportunities to give our teammates direct feedback about what they're working on, what their priorities ought to be, and how they're performing against those expectations with feedback both about, hey, what are the significant strengths that that person is exhibiting that's helping our organization be successful? And also perhaps, hey, what are some opportunity areas, places where we might want a little polish so that that person can continue to grow and develop and advance in their their own respective career, but also help our team be better. You know, I like to say we won't we won't be better as an organization next year if we're not all better as individuals next year, right? And so that's where the performance review can be a key tool, not to the exclusion of hopefully a lot of mentoring and coaching and performance feedback that's happening all the time, but a great just kind of touch point to put a little rigor behind that process and help everybody understand what are the goals of the organization? How does that relate to your individual performance expectations? And how are we doing against those expectations? And then also, in the best case, it's an opportunity for that teammate to also give feedback to the leader about, you know, hey, here's ways in which I observe. Thank, thank you for the feedback about how I'm doing. Here's also feedback for, you know, how you as a leader can better support me or how the team can better support me or how we could be better as a team collectively. So it's just really a great mechanism uh, to drive those types of conversations so that we can collectively get better as a team. Well, so why do we set SMART goals, Jason? So SMART goal methodology is really just about making sure that everybody's goals and tasks are clear. And so what SMART stands for is specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-bound. And really, so that's just kind of a, a mnemonic that we use to make sure leaders understand how they can give goals that are meaningful so that all of our teammates have the fairness of making sure that the goal that they're being given is actually obtainable. We don't want to put anybody in a position of, hey, I have uncertainty about what I'm being asked to accomplish or uncertainty about whether or not that is achievable or subject in a year's time to going back and saying, oh, we just, we missed on what our mutual expectations about what this looks like is. So um, that SMART goal methodology is really intended as kind of an aid to judgment for both leaders and teammates about how do we make these goals, construct them such that they're objective in character, we have mutual shared agreement about what they look like and what it will take to achieve them and over what time horizon we expect them to be achieved. And then in a year's time, we're well positioned to be able to go back and say, okay, was that met or not? And that lends itself to good conversation about okay, where did we make trade-offs? What happened? What got in the way? Or what worked really well? And in the absence of some of those key criteria and that SMART methodology, sometimes those conversations can be compromised. So that's why we use SMART goals. Advice or words of wisdom for supervisors that are getting ready to do those? Well, what I might do is just share a little bit about kind of my approach. When I'm thinking about giving reviews for my direct reports, I like to approach the conversation from really a perspective of I'm interested in four data points as I'm kind of delivering reviews. Of course, the goal accomplishment, my own direct observation of how the person is doing, the self-assessment of the teammate themselves. I think all of our teammates deserve the opportunity to share themselves about how they think they're doing and what do they observe, because oftentimes we as leaders might miss pockets of brilliance that might have occurred just beneath the radar, particularly if somebody is kind of a humble person. And then also the, the feedback of stakeholders and peers and leaders. 
And to me, if we can blend those four data points, I think that equips us to have really great and rich conversations. And I would just encourage managers throughout the organization, there, there are a few things that are more meaningful than we can do that give value back to our teammates than really putting a lot of rigor and thoughtfulness into the reviews and then constructing them and delivering them from the perspective of service, right? This is our attempt to hopefully package feedback to the recipient with the intent of being successful, right? To help them be successful. That's why we do this. And then for teammates receiving reviews, and all of us get reviews, right? It doesn't matter what level in the organization you're in. Placing our ourselves when we're receiving a review in kind of a learning mindset and not being defensive about any any feedback, but being receptive to whatever feedback we're getting. And, and the way I always couch feedback is, you know, hey, I'm not saying all of this is necessarily perfectly right. You have to put the feedback through the filter of your own experience and perspective and assess if this resonates with you or not. And if it doesn't, hey, set it to the side. If it does, if there's a nugget in there that you can take away that'll help you improve in your own career, that's wonderful. But always being in a spirit of receiving that feedback like it's a gift and my manager is putting a lot of thoughtfulness and time into helping me try to be successful. And that's the intent that's behind it. So I guess that would be my parting word of wisdom. Very good. Awesome. For anybody who doesn't know, Renee teaches a really good class called Effective Performance Management. Renee, do you want to tell us a little bit about that class? Sure. It is, it's a one-day instructor-led class, and we go over kind of making a case for effective performance management and kind of how to approach the whole year, the performance review really is just a formalization for HR records on all of the work that you've done on performance management throughout the year. There should be nothing new uh, that comes up in the performance review. And we really dig, we take a whole day and we really dig down into how to approach that and how to make sure that you're really doing it well and that you're getting a lot out of that investment of time. Renee, what are some things supervisors should know when they're conducting performance reviews? I would say the first thing might be surprising, but make sure that your team and you really have a good understanding of the performance rating scale. The scale is surprisingly surprisingly misunderstood and misinterpreted across the state. And so I want to get into that just a little bit. The state uses a five-point rating scale, which is far and away the most common used across all industries, agencies, businesses. So it's very, very common. And it's it's very important that everyone has a good understanding of what the definitions for each rating are. In particular, a rating of a three. A rating of a three means you're meeting performance expectations, which is what we strive for, right? So if, you're, if you get a three, you're meeting expectations. You're coming in, you're doing your job, you're doing it well, and that's something to be celebrated. And I think what happens is we are we are very well acclimated to five-point rating systems because that's what most of us used in school, an A, B, C, D, F, or a one, two, three, four, five. And I don't know what it was like at your house, but at my house, if I came home with a three, it was not something to be proud of. And the definitions are a little different. In school, if you get a C or a three or what you know, whatever your, your district uses, that usually indicates that you probably didn't study for all of your tests and quizzes as you should. You probably didn't turn in all of your homework. There's definitely some room for improvement with, with a C. And that's different from the rating scale that we use here at the state. A three at the state means that you are you did everything you were supposed to. You did all your homework. You studied for your tests. You did really well. So really, if you equate the, the school grades rating scale that we're all used to with the performance rating scale that we're using now, a three really equates to an A or a B in school grades because you're you're doing exactly what you're supposed to. That that should that should be celebrated. And a four or a five, you're doing extra credit, you know, you're doing literally above and beyond is the definition for for four and five. So I think for for supervisors and for all team members, you know, really having a good understanding and a common, really a common understanding of what those ratings mean can go a long way to to making the performance reviews even more effective. 
Because if you have a supervisor that is really happy with somebody's work and giving them a three, and they're seeing a three as a C, you really have a disconnect on, on what those mean. And you have a supervisor that's really happy with the performance and an employee that's disappointed in their score for the same work. And if that's something that you're interested in learning more about, there is an online class available for free to everyone in the EDC. It's called Understanding the Performance Rating Scale. It's about 20 minutes long, and we go into, we go into a little more detail on this exact subject. So if that's something that you haven't talked about as a team, this is a great time to, to really discuss that. Awesome. And, and we'll put the link to that in the show notes so people can access that easily. And secondly, I would just like to give supervisors some very basic advice on how to approach the review. As Justin mentioned earlier and Jason mentioned, you know, planning is your friend with performance reviews. So make sure that you plan carefully. Make sure that you formulate the key points that you want to deliver in the review. I don't recommend reading through the review with your, with your employee. They get a copy of the review. We hire people that are able to read independently and we can ask them <laughs> to do that. It's okay even to give the employee the review ahead of time just to let them go over it and digest it and think about it a little bit so it's maybe less stressful. You know, some employees really like to, to ruminate on information and think about things and, and really process it before they're ready to discuss it. So if you have folks that value that time, there's no reason why you can't give them the review to look over before you actually have the meeting. And the performance review is a great time not only to talk about performance, but to really talk about career development. This is a great opportunity to talk about, you know, where, where do they see themselves going? What's the next career step for your employee and what's the plan to get them there? What training do they need? What skills do they need to develop? And what is the plan for that? And, you know, to talk about training opportunities and uh, maybe any stretch assignments. And those are really fun conversations to have that a lot of times we probably don't make enough time to do in, in our, our everyday work. So the, the performance review really is an opportunity to, to connect with your, with your team members, make sure that you're on the same page, and plan for the next year. And that's always exciting. Are there any common mistakes or maybe misconceptions about how to conduct a performance review? I don't know. Um, I don't know that I would call it a mistake, but I think one of the major hurdles that both supervisors and team members have to kind of get over is seeing the performance reviews as an opportunity rather than rather than punitive. <laughs> Anytime you talk about about your performance and you're literally being judged by somebody, it's stressful. But if we have those if we have those conversations throughout the year, which we we talk about in the performance review class on specifically how to do that and really see it as an opportunity to talk about some of those development opportunities and some of that fun stuff, that project that you've, you've always wanted to work on or you know what training is gonna be available this year and really look at the performance review as an, an opportunity to spend time developing your team rather than just one more, one more thing that you have to mark off your to-do list. We have to do them anyway, and you might as well make it. Uh, you might as well make it a positive experience for everybody. And if this is something that you are interested in learning more about, if it's a muscle that you want to build a little bit, I do offer that effective performance management class as an open class periodically throughout the year. Um, the remaining dates for 2020 are April 20th, July 17th, and October 7th. This class is also part of the leadership certificate, if that's something that you're interested in as well. So hopefully I'll see you in a class soon. Well, and it sounds like this would be very applicable throughout the rest of the year, too, because like you said, performance reviews aren't just something that happen, you know, at this time of year. It's something that should be happening all the time. Absolutely. Performance management, if you're a supervisor, performance management is absolutely everyday work. And if you're doing if you're doing performance management and you're having those frequent performance discussions, if you're having one-on-ones, if you're providing fast feedback and you know noticing behavior that you want to see more of, the performance review is a snap. If folks want to sign up for these classes, where do they go? A reminder. Yes, just go right in the EDC, um, search effective performance management. Uh, this all of the sessions for 2020 are open for registration right now. 
So Justin and Chase, what resources are available to support navigating performance and goals in the EDC? When you log into the EDC, there's a user guides button. You can give that a click and it will list most of the user guides we have for all of the link programs. But there's an employee development center section where you can find ones for creating goals, launching reviews, completing reviews, all of that. You should also talk to your supervisor. They should be familiar with these and can probably help you out, as well as your agency's HR folks. I'd also add, too, that there is a custom page that has information, just general information about the performance reviews and stuff about the competency changes and formulas that are used for coming up with the scores. But another thing is there's a section for how to do just basic standard reporting. So that's a good resource for managers that want to maybe track on their team's progress through the actual review cycle and stuff of that nature. It's out there too. And we can link to those in our show notes. What mistakes are most commonly made in the system and how can managers avoid making those mistakes? I think for the review process itself would be not having goals completely created and approved because when the review launches, it's they pull those in. And if they don't have one created, I mean, they might even have them out there, but if they're in a status of like pending approval or saved as a draft, correct, it's not going to pull those in. And it's really, you've been working on them for a year in theory, so you shouldn't have this problem, but it happens. And if you can catch that, even if the review is still in process, there's ways that we can help get those in. It'd probably be easiest to call the help desk and we could assist somebody with that. But I'd say that's one of the bigger ones we see is I went in there and my goals aren't loaded or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. People are pretty familiar with the system by now and we don't see a whole lot of technical yeah. issues with it. Correct. Well, that's good news. Yeah. Do you have any tips or tricks to make it a smooth process for managers? Uh, one thing I would say is to check out the manager dashboard. Um, under your reports menu, there's a dashboards option where there's a manager dashboard. When you get there, you'll want to hit the options button and refresh it first and then probably go get a cup of coffee or something because it'll take five minutes. But when it loads, it'll show you a bunch of little graphs and charts saying, this is how many goals my employees have for this calendar year. And this is how many reviews are open to me and all sorts of information, training hours. So uh, I'd say check that thing out. I would add to that with managers, it's just like every other responsibility, you have to be prepared. View this as a whole year that you're actually preparing for it, whether it be jotting notes down, recording stuff that an employee did or didn't do. And I would say a big thing that's important, and Jason kind of touched on it earlier, but it's just having the employees do that first step. As an employee, that's your way of saying, hey, this is what I think, and the manager might see something that they didn't take in consideration. But another part would be it also might bring something to light that they weren't even aware of, like especially those last two questions, stuff that you're celebrating or proud of over last year, but do you have the tools to do your job? And, you know, just participation, I mean, that's going to make it then easier for the manager when they go to do the ratings. And then when you sit down and talk over everything, there's no surprises. As we say at the EDC, it's just a tool. I mean, the review thing should be something you're doing every day, you know. I'd say communication is what's going to make it go the smoothest as well. Just be communicating with each other, knowing what you have to take care of, and being prepared. You know, that, that simple along with everything else you have to do, so... Are there any sorts of functionality within the process review that people might not know about that might make it easier for them? The options button appears at the upper right on every page of a review. And when you click on that, it gives you a drop down menu. And one of the ones that I actually do use once in a while is the download review. And it downloads the review for whatever step you're at into an Excel file. You could then do that in an Excel, it's formatted to be like the review. Then you just go back to that same button when you're done and do upload review. Or If you're not going to have internet connection, that's a great way to fill it out. Or if you need time to think, work on it, save it, and then you feed it back into the system. It's just like attaching a file. And then all that information is going to flood into the review template. Another thing I would add is managers or whoever the review is at, uh, can add co-planners for their step on their own. They don't need to have HR or us do it through that options button, which shows up on every step of the review, every page. Awesome. Great.
good. Well, that's all for this very special episode of Trading Blend. Thanks for listening, and thank you so much to Jason, Justin, and Chase for joining us today. I really I very much appreciate you guys welcoming sure. me and allowing you, me to join you once again. Thanks, Katie. My pleasure. Join us again next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of Training Blend. We release new episodes of this podcast monthly. Make sure you follow us at Any State Training on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and State of Nebraska Training and Development on LinkedIn to make sure you don't miss a single episode. Until next time.